AI has been all the rage lately. How do you actually make designs using Midjourney or different AI platforms that are actually going to sell? So let's create an AI design together. First, I'm gonna do some research on what I want to create. I sell mostly t-shirts, so I'm gonna be looking up shirts and you can do this, say you sell mugs, if you sell clip art, different digital downloads. I use E-Rank to do my research on what I want to create. And Halloween is coming up. I want to create something Halloween themed. So first I looked up Halloween shirt using E-Rank, which gives you Etsy stats and scrolling down, I'm gonna find different sub niches that maybe have high search, but a lot less competition. Scrolling down right here, I'm loving the looks of this one. 374 searches, but only a thousand competition. And that is a pug Halloween shirt. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to get an idea. I actually like to do text usually on my shirts. So coming over to the first way to implement AI is I'm actually gonna use AI to come up with a saying or an idea that I want to put on a shirt. So using chat GPT, I asked it to create 10 funny short saying text ideas for a Halloween shirt with a pug wearing a witch costume with a pumpkin. And the first one that came up was pumpkin, pugkin spice and everything fright. While all these other ones I'm not as huge on, this first one gave me a really good idea. And I actually think pugkin spice latte is hilarious. I love pumpkin spice lattes. And that's a hilarious pun that I can see selling. So I'm gonna write that down and then we're going to move over and try to create an image of a pug with pumpkin spice using AI. And then we can plug in this text. And then I'm going to open Kittle and I'm going to create a brand new file. And you may be wondering, why am I using Kittle over Canva, over Illustrator or some of the other design platforms? And I'm going to show you a little bit later in this video, but it is specifically because of some brand new AI tools that they have built in that make our AI designs sellable. So first you can test out their AI maker. They already do have a built-in one. And then you can select which different clip art styles you'd like. I asked for a pug sitting inside a pumpkin spice latte, clip art, no background. And then let's see what that gives us. For those looking to really quickly create a new element using the AI, the Kittle AI is great, but it isn't as robust as some of the other AI image generators out there like Midjourney. So I'm actually going to go into Midjourney and re create this, but there is a reason I am still using Kittle, even with my mid journey designs that makes it superior over other design platforms. But before I show you why it is superior, first we actually need to go create an AI image that we can use in our designs. So based on what we're going to be doing, which is the pumpkin spice latte, that is almost a tongue twister. I'm going to ask mid journey to create a clip art featuring a mug and a pumpkin spice latte. If you guys are not yet familiar with Midjourney, search up Midjourney on Google, download it, it connects to your Discord, and then it'll bring you into this channel where you are able to write prompts right into Discord and it will spit back images to you. You are probably gonna be needing to pay for a subscription. So to do that, once you actually have the bot within Midjourney, we can actually just go type dash subscribe and then send that and then they are going to give you a prompt where you can go manage your account and you can upgrade your plan so you can include more prompt availability and you're able to use these for commercial use. But once you do have Midjourney set up in a chat room, you might be in a public chat room. You can also start a private chat room with the Midjourney bot given you pay for a subscription. But to start asking for prompts or for your image, you're gonna type forward dash, imagine. And now we're gonna start crafting our prompt. So I put in a pug sitting beside a pumpkin spice latte. I want it to be clip art so that the image is pretty simple and there is a white plain background. I also specified no background and I put simple so it doesn't go too crazy with the design. You are probably going to have to play with props quite a bit depending on what style you are looking for. On Google, you can look up different image styles. You can just play with your wording. Sometimes it listens to part of the prompt and ignores part of the prompt, but this is one I'm going to go with right now and I'm going to hit return and see what options it gives me. So in my first round of trials, these are the four different options that I got. I am loving probably the first one here and the third one here. So if I liked any of these, I can hit U1, which will match the box up here. This top left one is going to be U1. The top right is going to be U2. And that is going to upscale the image so I can save it as higher res versus if I like 
the options it gave me, but I want it to change it a little bit. I can hit V1, V2, which is going to create different variations similar to that option they had given you. So on this one, I actually tried changing up the wording a little bit. And instead of sitting beside a pumpkin spice latte, I put a pug sitting inside a pumpkin spice latte, which I think adds to the pun a little bit. And for this one, I am really liking, really can't decide between one, two, and three. I'm gonna try running a few more variations until I'm sure I really can't decide. These are all spitting back really good ones. So after running a few different variations, this is one that I'm deciding to go with. I could be playing with this forever, which is always the issue because you find one and then you can't decide between a few. So I'm just gonna go with this one and obviously you can pick a few of them and make a few different variations. But what I'm gonna do is right from Discord, I'm actually gonna hit right click. I'm going to save image and just save to my downloads. So I'm gonna bring this file into Kittle now and show you why exactly I choose to use Kittle with my AI images, even ones that were created elsewhere outside of Kittle. And the first one is when you first bring in an AI image or create any AI image, it's going to have this really annoying background and you can't print this on a lot of projects or if you're selling it as a digital download, people are not gonna wanna buy this if it's got a big white box around it. So Kittle has a built-in AI background remover, which is fantastic. And yes, this background remover is not specific to Kittle. Many, many platforms can do a white background remover, but the real power is in the next step, which is an image vectorizer. Right now, all AI images are pixel-based or raster images, which means the higher you scale them up, the more pixelated and blurry it's going to look. Versus if you have a vector image, it is based on mathematical lines. So if you actually scale it up and down, it scales proportionately and you are never going to get that blurriness or that jagged edge. So we want to be able to convert all of our AI images to be vector because we're going to be scaling them up to either sell them again as digital downloads or for what I'm doing, print on demand. And if you're doing print on demand, you definitely need high res images. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to image vectorizer. If we wanted this to be a black and white photo, we would do one color. But because this image has a bunch of different colors in there, we're going to go to the max, which is 16. And then we're going to hit vectorize image. So now with this image, Image has been vectorized and you're going to notice now what we can do within Kittle is we can change every single color that is within this image. So if I didn't like the color scheme, I can just go play with every single shade and change them up. Another thing with the Kittle vectorizer, if I wanted to flatten this image, so I didn't want as many different colors, you would just select less colors. So you could do like five colors and they would group all the similar colors and it would change your image to just have five colors in it. And then you can edit those colors as well the same way as you can here. This is what makes the Kittle AI so impressive. I have not found another tool that does this. Yes, you can manually do it if you pay for Photoshop or Illustrator. And I've been even told that I should try using PhotoP, but I have tried using PhotoP to do this and you can give it a go. It does not work out well for you at all. It cannot detect the lines the way this Kittle AI can. And same with using the paid platforms like Illustrator and Photoshop, you're gonna get a lot more jagged edges and I wasn't able to get those same results that I was able to get in just one single click with Kittle. And then for me, I design with Kittle. So I already have this in here and now I can start adding other elements to make this my full t-shirt design. So I'm gonna start adding in my text, which was our pumpkin spice latte. So I've gone in, added text. I picked a font that I would like. Kittle has amazing fonts already loaded into them. And then I'm gonna add some text effects just to make this look better. I'm actually going to add an outline. So I'm gonna use their shading. I'm going to set the offset a little bit smaller. I'm gonna add an outline. And then I'm gonna go back into settings and I'm just gonna change the colors. Because we turn this into a vector and Kittle can detect the colors, we now have all the colors that were used in our above image as document colors so we can match down below. And I'm liking the look of this and I might just go play with thickness a little bit more. And there we go, we have pumpkin spice latte. I might also try playing with that up here. You can add a custom arch. Let's do an arch over here and see how that looks. I think I actually like it lower at the bottom how we first had it. I'm liking it like this. So I'm going to save this now and I'm going to download it as a PNG file with removable background. Now I've actually just brought my image onto one of my mock-up photos just to see how this looks like on a sweatshirt. I love to see what it actually looks up mocked up on things because this is what people are going to see when they're searching on Etsy. So you need to make sure it looks good. And I am loving
loving the way that this turned out. This combo of using ChatGPT, MidJourney, and Kittle AI tools has helped me create listings and sales in both the digital downloads and on my print on demand products as well. And that Kittle AI vectorizer is seriously the cheapest and the fastest way I have found to vectorize my images without much hassle. And then it's also just really convenient because I can just continue designing right in that file. When you are trying to create designs within MidJourney or AI, one thing you're gonna notice is it is really hard to get it exactly as you want right away. You're gonna have to play around with it. They do not do text well. If you want multiple different elements within your design, I recommend asking MidJourney for all of those designs separately and then putting them together yourself. Otherwise, it's really hard to just right off the bat, get a full design for print on demand, especially if you want text involved with it. Also lately for me, using the word clip art or vector, no background, black and white has helped me get my desired results for my mid journey prompts. Thank you guys so much for listening and let me know if you've been using AI for your designs. Thanks and I'll see you next week.